next one in the arena is a power rider and um, Sharon said that she's totally happy to talk about anything and everything so here we go. Um, Sharon, if you just come and stand with Rosie and myself. So I've known Sharon from WA when I was in WA and uh, her mother rang me when she was a little girl and said I really need a horse for, I didn't know who they were, nothing about them, need a horse for their daughter who wasn't well and um, they wanted something very special. I was out in the middle of the sticks in the Pilliger, can you believe, and these people had this little chestnut Galloway with a blondie mane and tail and I said, I know the horse, it's got her name all over it. And I rang and said, just buy it. And they literally just bought it from or we wore all near the Pilliger and he came to Western Australia and he really, Zan oh, I remembered his name, Zanzibar. And that's quite a long time ago. So Sharon, a little bit, I mean, she, Sharon is the most gorgeous girl you've ever met in your life and is quite open and very normal about everything. What, what actually is your disability? Um, okay, so I had um, bone cancer as a child. Um, in my left femur um, and it was early days of what they did then and they had the option of um, amputation from my hip um, but they said that that wouldn't give me a very good um, chance of walking with a prosthesis um, so my case got taken to head of pediatrics oncology in the US and they said okay we'll try this experiment to first save her life and secondly save my leg um, so with limb salvage surgery, they kept my leg. Um, but as a result of that, I um, yeah have a leg that doesn't work function fully. Um, and then the bottom of my right leg actually got affected when they tried to even me up. I had um, end up with like an eight centimetre leg difference. So they stopped my right leg growing. Um, and the bottom of the right leg doesn't quite function fully, but I th we thought it was always a good leg, um, actually until I went to classification for para, and then they said, oh, that one doesn't work properly either. <laughs> so, um, I have a, yeah, I have the bad leg and the not so good leg, so <laughs> that's, that's why I have, um, yeah, implications of that, like I have a lot of nerve issues and, yeah, I have stiff um, spasm, um, yeah, different things like that. So um, once you're um, classified as a para, and if you can just tell us what grade you are and what, what movements you have to do at that level, um, you're allowed to carry two whips and, and you get a, a card that says whatever. Yeah, so um, the compensating aids that I have, um, that I can, I can have two whips. Um, I can also have um, bands to my um, stirrupines. Uh, if I have a bad day, my legs can just shorten by an inch and there is nothing I can do about that. Um, I, like, I guess uh, my pelvis doesn't function fully, um, but I do physio weekly. I have a strength and conditioning program, work with an exercise physiologist um, and make the most of what I do have. So now tell us a little bit about the horse that you're lucky to be riding and the, your experience. Um, you've been to Olympic Games, you've qualified and represented Australia and uh, of course you've always had Rosie by your side pretty well for the last quite a while. Uh, yeah, so um, my first, I got classified for para in 2006. My first world championships were in 2007 where we rode borrowed horses. Um, I did Beijing. Paralympics, uh, WEG in 2010, um, and it was the year before that that I was um, had travelled east and then was brave enough, actually, I wasn't brave enough, a friend um, asked Rosie if I could have a lesson, and that was the start of it, and it hasn't ended, so, um, and we came home the next year with two bronze medals um, from WEG, and we made it to Rio as well. Um, Finding a horse can be difficult, but it, I mean, it's the same as an able-bodied person and, you know, you've always got finances to think about as well. Um, and after we retired my metal horse, um, trying to find the finances to find an international horse is always difficult. Um, I had a horse that I thought I'd campaign for Tokyo and unfortunately got an injury. And um, 
just when I was thinking, I, okay, I'm ready to give up, this is too hard, and I'll go back across the Nullarbor and go home, um, we put a call out on Facebook to see if anybody did have a horse. We were looking for a unicorn, uh, an international quality horse that basically somebody would be prepared to loan, and uh, Danella Merritt from Queensland um, sent us a message, and as soon as we saw the message, we were like, okay, that's that's the horse um, and yeah so this is Romanos he's um, he was imported when he was younger Danella did medium tour on him and um, she was busy with her business up there and so is yeah kindly lent the ride to me um, and he, he really is a super example of what the sport in Australia needs horse wise and for an owner to be prepared to do that is just amazing and I'm forever grateful so now we'll talk about a coach that, that for paras. I know lots of us, I think you get asked to help some person that has a minor disability or even a major disability, and we'll go like, oh, no, I don't think I can do that. What, from, from your shoes as a, as a para rider, what do you look for in a coach? Um, so what I look for in a coach is a coach that will teach me to ride dressage properly. Um, that's a priority, you know, like they don't treat me differently. They, yes, they understand that I have a disability. Um, we have a giggle every time Rosie says more leg because I know that means more whip. Um, <laughs> so, but somebody who is prepared to think outside the box at times, um, that's, you know, all you need to do is be brave and, and prepared to tr teach somebody the sport of dressage because when we get judged, that's what we get judged on. We don't get judged on our disability. We get judged on how the horse goes. Um, so that's that's a priority, really. Um, that yeah, the the coach coaches dressage, teaches us dressage, and um, can think outside the box occasionally when we need. So yeah. We ran out of time talking to you. We could talk to you forever, Shan. Rosie, just one question from you as a, as a coach of para riders, and there's more than one that you coach, I'm sure. Um, do you treat them any differently? No. <laughs> no, and simple, I'm, no. It's, no. I'm sure that's what Sharon would like to hear, no. yeah? Uh, no, I think, I think um, we hardly talk about, uh, uh, about it, really. I mean, it's a reality for Sharon, and, and she's very ambitious. She's tough um, and and if it's a really bad day well she'll say no I'm, I won't ride today um, but basically I mean she's lopsided I'm lopsided most of us ride a bit lopsided um, it, it's it's a reality for her and she has to cope with it but we to be honest we don't really talk about it do we it, do, it doesn't enter the the conversation so for coach out there to get asked to help with power movement is nothing to be scared of Absolutely not. No, I think, and I think I do think, um, especially in Australia, when when you look at the the para riders when you go internationally, I mean, they they're they're incredible, and their horses are going really well, and we've got to expect the same here. I'm, I'm I mean I I I'm sure I, I haven't coached a para rider that's not level what grade four. Uh, under under that and I'm sure it has its challenges but as Sharon said you know when you get in the arena they're not that interested in it they're interested in the way the horse goes and, and I also think Sharon's comment was fantastic it, it, all her words were fantastic but she said you need someone that looks outside the box a little bit so you t you can't be always pure and simple you can't use more leg you need to use your whip a little bit yeah. or you need to bend them this way or that or you need compensating as you need something to yeah. help so looking outside the box to get the job done is what it's about so if you get the opportunity to, to help any of the paras or involved in those things not only is it uh, really competitive when you see it internationally uh, it is absolutely incredible they are just like mentally they're just like any other top rider so thanks Rosie and we'll have a look at you coach fabulous Sharon Jarvis okay well that said Sharon has entered the into one so this weekend she did pre St George last weekend um, has done a para test yesterday which is obviously where her priority lies but with the opportunity to ride a horse like this that is already going at this level and also the opportunity to put him in an arena which is similar to an international arena 
why wouldn't you take the opportunity? But um, because Sharon has decided that she's going to do Into One this weekend for the first time, we thought we might um, work a little bit on uh, the probably the two things that are the most different in Into One from um, the pre-St. George, which is the zigzag up the centre line, which a lot of riders don't particularly like and find difficult, and, and full counter pirouettes on the small diagonal. Um, so have you warmed up a bit? Yeah, we might, we might just do a little bit more. The other thing about the into one is that um, it's absolutely, and just walk again. So you can see this, this guy is not overly keen on the whip being used um, as opposed to leg. So his, his one, one little thing is that um, if, if Sharon gets a little sharp with the whip, he, he wants to go a little bum high, so he wants to kick his, his um, bottom up. So put him a little bit to shoulder in first. So we're trying to put, uh, as he goes to trot, he's got to put his bum a little down, not a little bit up. So when we're schooling it, we tend to do a little bit shoulder in, try to put him a little on the ground first, and then when you're ready, try and go to trot. And especially if he's a little tight, he'll want to kick his... Yeah, better, well done. Um, he, he'll want to kick his bottom in the air. He, he, that's his little go-to, so that's something that we're gradually trying to erase from the system. Okay, so come a little more forward now. And let, let's just, um, as a warm-up, you're going to um, come down, go across the diagonal and do the into one, shoulder in, uh, eight metre circle, half pass, and, and we want to see accuracy, because this, this test is a real test of accuracy. You've got to do shoulder in, eight metre circle on the centre line, and you're lucky in here we've got the centre line, this middle row of lights. So turn, no, go round again, you overshot. She overshot by, oh, I don't know, not very much, but you can't afford to overshoot in the into one. So you've got to make the turn. Look, look at these lights, Sharon. It's not so difficult in here. You turn onto the center line, shoulder in. Okay, go and do it again, because you were too slow into the shoulder in. That was a much better turn onto the center line, but it's got to go straight to the shoulder in. You're going shoulder in, D to X. Okay, slightly overshot, no, and now you're, can you feel you're drifting a little left? But that's, this, this time we'll let it go. So eight metre circle, little more trot, that's it. That's a little big, and half pass. Good, keep coming, keep coming forward, that's it. That's it. Good. And a little, little early. Halt at C. Rain back five. And one, two, three, and four, and five, and trot. Good. And then we'll go medium trot on the diagonal. You can go rising if you want. Good. Oh no, what am I talking about? Just ignore me, come back. Sorry, sorry, it's half past from H. So do sh center line again, turn. Okay, go around again, we'll do that again. So, because I've gone bonkers. Right, so you've got to go half past um, eight meter circle, shoulder in the other way. I'll muddle her up for the week weekend. Okay, so shoulder in, hind legs to me, hind legs to me, stay in shoulder in, and don't drift left. Yeah, yeah, that's better there. And then eight meter circle, forward, that's it. And you can see he just sometimes doesn't react forward to the whip, he actually just likes to kick up a little bit. Come forward, that's it, that's it. Let the forehand stay in the lead, good. Good, okay, and then halt, rein back, five, and then you go half pass, circle, um, shoulder in the other way. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five, and trot, and half pass, 
Eight meter circle left, shoulder in left. Good, look for the center line. Yep, you slightly overshot it again. And this, is, this has got to be super accurate. Now look, turn and look at, at A, hind legs to A, shoulder in left, better, yep, yep. Good, and then you straighten up and turn right. And then you came slightly off the center line at the end and walk, that's good. Okay, so that's, that's your into, into one work. That's got to be even more accurate, but, but that's good. And he's got this, this guy, just, um, Sh Sharon is a little tentative, I think, in her pre-St. George because she wasn't sure what he'd be like in this atmosphere. But actually, he's really good, and this is great for him to do this. Super. Okay, so let's um, pick up, come on the left rein and we'll do the pre-St. George zigzag in the canter to start with and then we'll do the um, into one zigzag. So when, we, when we've taught the flying changes, when we originally um, t taught the flying changes with um, Serena's horse, you have the horse coming a little bit forward, so go right round to F and do the FX um, M zigzag. You, you, with this, I want to see the horse come up the center line. Depending on the, the level of the horse um, or, or the greenness of the horse, he's got to come a little forward around her right leg before he does the flying change on the center line. So half pass. Good. Center line forward straight around the right leg change. Good girl. Well done. And now you've got to get over in time here. I don't want to see that flying change get muddled with the corner. The flying change is straight and the corner. Good job. Well done. Okay, walk. Okay, so now we've got to do the zigzag from the into one, which is center line on the right rein, right half pass to the quarter line, flying change, left half pass to the quarter line flying change, right half pass to the center line flying change. Now, the, the trick is working backwards from here, I want the, the half pass to be finished in time that the flying change happens in a balanced way. The judges want, don't want to see you shooting through the corner doing a flying change. They want to see you go here, and here I do my flying change, and then I ride a straight stride, and I'm beautifully in control, and I turn left and off I go. So working back from there, the first half pass flying change has to happen before you are level with P or when you are level with P on the quarter line. The second half pass has to happen um, on the quarter line before or when you're level with S, because otherwise you will not have time to get back to the center line and show the judges how beautifully balanced you are and how you can ride the flying change straight towards the C judge. Okay, so shall, shall we try that? It, it starts on the right rein. And, and what I would say when you're first riding this is don't be too ambitious in going too far sideways. I would almost rather see um, a, a horse that, that will do a little bit less than the five meters um, uh, and, and do it really neatly than go five meters and then find you've completely run out of time at the end here. Okay, stay back with your upper body. Yep, good. Nice. Go a little bigger canter. Good, and then a little clacked. Good turn. That's far enough, so come straight, forward, change. Good work. And then over you go. Now straight, forward, change. 
went maybe a fraction far, get onto that centre line in time. Good job. Walk. Well, I thought that was pretty nice. And we haven't, we haven't um, practiced that for a while. So, okay, to make it better, it can be more exuberant and, and um, more expressive and more uphill and all the things that the judges want to see. But for me, for a, a, a first go at that, um, for our first ever into one, if you did that in the test, you'd be absolutely thrilled, or I would be absolutely thrilled. Um, just be careful you don't go too far over at, at when you're next to S, because you do not want to be running out of time when you get onto the centre line. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do for into one is um, the two canter pirouettes on the short diagonal. I mean, we, we can take care of the tempi changes. If, if people want to see tempi changes, we can do them. But I think um, we saw them yesterday, didn't we, with Mary? Let's, let's have a look at setting up for the canter pirouette um, uh, on, on the short diagonal HB. So you've just done your zigzag, that's the first movement into one, um, uh, extended canter, flying change, and then three uh, KXM, and then after your last flying change, you're going, right, okay, now my next thing is um, canter pirouettes. And this to me is where the corner that we talked about with the novice horse comes into play. You, you wanna be riding this as a proper corner because you don't have an awful lot of room to make the turn onto the line HB. And, and that, that's your accurate line coming across HB. And already, as Mary was talking about yesterday, we want to be in shoulder four. You don't want to come into your canter pirouette in travers because it take, makes the turn too big. So we're already in shoulder four because the forehand is going to come around the hindquarters. When I'm about here, I want to be glancing up at A, and, and from A I will get my bearings as to whether I'm on the center line. I've made sure when I turned at H that I'm on the line HB. Now I want to make sure that I'm not going to overshoot the center line. So here I am coming up to the center line, and again, depending on how green the horse is, if you can ride a super tight pirouette, then I'll come a little bit further, but if I can't, then I'll probably start it here, and I'll be thinking with an into one horse, maybe at this stage, I'm gonna ride a tiny little circle, but that it goes around the center line. Otherwise, if you start too late, you're gonna end up over here, which is quite often which, what you see in the into one, which is the, the flying change nowhere near the center line. So already, here I'm on the line, I've glanced at A, I'm gonna make a little tiny circle around the center line. How many strides to a full canter pirouette? Six to eight. So I'm coming around the center line. As I get to here, I'm glancing back at B because I wanna come out of the um, canter pirouette in shoulder four, but then come forward and straight. And my flying change is gonna happen um, on the diagonal before B. Here I do my flying change, and here I make my turn to K, line up with K, shoulder four right, I'm collecting, I'm keeping an eye on A to make sure that my um, pirouette doesn't overshoot and end up the other side of the center line. I'm still on my line to K and here I ride my little circle again around the center line, forward straight out flying change. Just like that, go and do it. Now just do it. Just do it. And at this stage, for the first time through it, I would be thinking of what, what I would call a large pirouette. We're not, we're not trying for Olympic gold medals here, we're just trying to, to get the, uh, a really good feel that the horse stays a little forward around her inside leg. Good, into the corner. Look where you're going, look for that line. And now glance at A to make sure you don't go over the center line. 
That's it. Let, it, let him keep coming forward. Go on. We didn't give him much of a warm up for this, did we? So we're doing a very nice big pirouette. Good boy, go round again. Go round again. So you're coming a little bit to this side of me. That's it, round your left leg. That's it. And then a little circle around me. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Look for E, a B. Good forward, good job. Good, now look for K, a glance at A, right bend, forward around your right leg. Keep him coming a little forward, make it a little bigger. And you can see this guy kind of knows, well done. This guy kind of knows what he's doing and he wants to come a little bit behind her in the pirouette. That's why I would say go schooling. Come and do it again, Sharon, well done. Um, I would go for schooling, make it always a little bit bigger and then you can tighten up a little bit for the test. It's good, we haven't done this with him, for, well, for ages because I'm not sure that I even knew he was going into one, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. She's we just going to do it. Yeah, just do it. Good. Left bend. Keep him coming. F little forward in it. Little big. Little big. That's it. Little bit um, right leg. Little bit right. Little more right leg. All right. There, he, there was really too much of a circle. Good. And then this way, he'll tighten up a bit too much. So make this way a little bigger. Little more left. Yeah, yeah. Good job. I would say that that would pass pretty well. Yeah, Absolutely good. fantastic. Good work. And, and so you can see with, with the collection and the whip, Sharon has to be really careful. It's all very well to do a little tiny aid with the spur. Let's, let's just do the left one again. And I want to see just a little more Travek because he's just pushing out a little bit um, against your right leg. So make, make this, you can make it a little bigger, but a little more Travek. Go on, get left bend, get left bend, right. Now he's got more travé. Yeah, more travé. Come on, push his hindquarters a little left. That's it. That's it. Good job. Yeah, yeah. So that will stop him pushing, pushing out um, uh, against the, the rider's outside leg. You want to come into a canter pirouette in shoulder four, but once you're in it, it's important that the horse doesn't push out against your outside leg. Okay, do you want to ride just one line of, um, do a circle down there. Your threes come across KM. Why, why don't we just ride a line of threes? Shorten your reins a little bit. That's it. Oh, lovely. Well done. Oh, that oh, was great. Yeah, and he, he's got a little spunk about him, this chap. Well done. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, keep him cantering. That's good. Keep clapping. That's good for him. Yeah, perfect. Canter circle here. That's really good for him. Okay, well done. Walk. Good boy. Good work. So, um, what, what a wonderful horse. You know, they're... they're uh, it, 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 just not that easy to find, and th this really is what well, great experience. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, super. Thanks, Sharon. And Good job. Yeah, put your hands together again quietly at first, and then as loud as you want for Sharon Jarvis and beautiful Romanus. So, if anyone's got any questions regarding the advanced work, let us know. Oh, there's no problem. And uh, what was so fantastic was, like Sharon, uh, no, no one ever looked at you as a 
para rider was just another rider being coached and trained. Rossi never backed up. The send line's not good enough. The half pass needs more this. Shorten your range, Sharon, do this, do that. Nothing different. You teach them exactly like a total able bodied rider and uh, slip in and make it good. And I'm sure that's exactly how Sharon wants it in every para rider. Yep. Okay, are there any questions about any of that? I mean, it was so beautifully explained by Rosy, it was amazing. Sharon, so just a little word before you go about uh, your Olympic experience and also about what you got out of that session. Uh, what did I get out of that session? I should probably tell my coach what I plan to do. <laughs> she what? <laughs> probably tell you what I'm going to try and do. Um, <laughs> I trust my coach to get me through it. <laughs> I think that's what you need in a coach. You need to be able to... We just do it. We yeah, we go it. with the flow, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so because we don't get many that many experiences um, to do our para tests, like just to be at a venue like this, to be able to prepare for a Games, you know, I was a little bit like, okay, what can I enter to get as much practice as I can? Um, but, yeah, to... The Olympic experience is... Um, a really crazy journey and um, you turn up at a venue you've never been to before and then you've suddenly got to perform and for me coming here this it's just like that um, I've never been here before and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to come um, but coaching from Rosie like she doesn't accept second best and that's what I would like as a rider to be able to ride at the top that's what you need to be able to do so um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and to, she has a great way of explaining things um, that I understand. Um, and yeah, just, that's, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good out, thanks. Thanks, Sharon, it's fantastic. If you could put your hands together for Sharon Jobs Romulus and we wish you all the best of luck tomorrow in your end of one. Not that Rosie knew that was happening, but never mind, you would you just, just do it. So uh, we look forward to that and of course uh, it's, a, it's a great experience for Sharon to be able to ride against able bodied. She doesn't think of herself as anything else, it's just another competitor with another horse competing into one and that's exactly right. The only difference is that she's allowed to use two whips and she can keep, she can compete against the able bodied riders which is really good for you, huh? Sharon, you enjoy that a lot. So uh, again, thank you very much for that fantastic demo with the power rider and Rosie, you amaze Thanks, us Sharon. all, thank that's you very really much. Good.